Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And today we're going to be looking at camera projection and we'll be taking this flat image and turning it into this 3D scene. Now, there are three different ways of doing camera projection in Fusion, but we'll be looking at the UV map method in this tutorial. So I've got two versions of my shot, one of which looks like this, and the other of which looks like that. And you'll see that this second version has this cabin here on the rear platform. And the reason for these two images is that I want to be able to map this cabin separately from the rest of the scene. So I'll be using this clean image for the bulk of the construction. And obviously I made this just by tidying it up in Photoshop. I'll put a link in the comments below where you can download both of these shots if you want to follow along. I should just point out that this shot doesn't have nearly enough resolution for what we're trying to do with it, and I would recommend that you use as high a resolution image as possible for this kind of work. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a Blin tool to this. So Shift Spacebar Blin. And I'm going to switch on two-sided lighting for this. We'll be coming back to this Blin tool later on. And the next thing I want to do is I want to map this onto a 3D shape. So Shift Space Bar 3SH for 3D shape and pipe the Blin into that. And that looks like this. So by default, it's a plane and that's what we want in this instance. So I'm going to come over to the Transform tab for this plane. First thing I want to do is I want to move it up on Y 0.5 so it's sitting on the ground plane but I also want to shift the pivot point down, so that's also on the ground plane, so minus 0.5 for the Y pivot. And that makes it easier to scale and move it all around. So then I'm going to unlock the XYZ scale and enter an X scale value of 10. The next thing we want to do is add the UV map tool. So shift space bar 3 UV gives us the UV map 3D tool. By default, this is planar, and that looks like that, but we want to be using the camera map mode, so I'll switch to that. And then we need to add a camera to do the projection. So I'm going to click on the flow, shift space bar 3cm for a camera, and you'll notice that the UV map tool has a camera input. Now we've switched to that mode, and I can pipe my camera into that input. So now the camera is projecting onto the plane, but obviously it's sitting right on top of it, so it's not being terribly useful. So I'm going to come over to the camera's transform, and I'm going to open up the pivot, and I'm going to do something that's going to make this a whole lot easier, and that's to link the Z pivot to the Z offset. So type equals in the Z pivot field, and pick whip it to the Z offset, and then add a minus sign in front of that expression. Now what I can do is I can increase the Z offset. I'm going to set that to 5. So it moves the camera, camera back enough to project onto our plane. And then I can just use the Y rotation to get the camera so that it's pointing more or less in the right direction. And obviously in our original scene, if you remember what that looked like, the camera was obviously over off to the right hand side and looking down the platform. So if we come back to this, we need to move the camera over to the right here. And we'd be doing that using the Y rotation because of our Z pivot linking. So I'm going to move it around roughly speaking like that. And then I'm going to just zoom in onto this so we can see more clearly what we need to do. The first thing I want to do is I want to increase the Y offset so we can start to see the edge of the platform. There we are. And what I want to do is I want to line up that platform edge, which I know to be a straight line, with the bottom of the plane. And I'm going to use that using the Y rotation. Okay, just increase that, continue to increase that until we get something like that. and our edge is lined up, and then we can just bring that Y offset down a little bit, maybe to around there. And so now this is correctly mapped onto our plane, and we've done it very easily simply by adjusting the Y rotation and not really having to worry about any of the other transform controls. I'm just going to 
take the 3D shape and I'm going to move it on X. So minus 2.5. I'll just balance that up a little bit more. The one other thing I want to do is to reduce the Y scale. So we're just getting the top of this back wall here. So I'm going to take the Y scale for the shape and holding down the command key, which gears down the transform, I'm just going to reduce that down to around about there. It's a little bit hard to see because it's so dark, but that should do it. Now you'll notice that we're getting this shine on our texture and obviously that's something we don't want. So I'm going to just quickly come back to the blin and I'm going to reduce the specular intensity down to zero and that's going to sort that out. Okay, so now we want to build the rest of the scene. So I'm going to take this shape here Command-C, Command-V. I'll pipe the blin into it. I'll take the original shape and I want to add a 3D merge. So Shift Spacebar 3MG to add a 3D merge. And I'll pipe this second shape into it. F2 to rename these. So select the first one. I'm going to call that Rear Wall. And this new one, F2, I'm going to call Rear Platform. Then this rear platform, come over to its transform and adjust the X rotation 90 degrees. And you'll see that that now creates this platform here. I just need to adjust the Y position of the camera so that we're getting a little bit of mapping on the platform itself. So I'm going to just bring it down like that. That's about as far as we can go. You'll see that there's a light here that we don't want to include in our mapping of the floor. So we just need to go to the point, which is about there, at which we've just got enough pixels to map onto the floor. Obviously, our original camera angle means we haven't got a great deal of information to play with there, uh, but we are not going to be silly and look at it from the top here. You can only use as much information as is, in fact, contained in your original image. OK, so I'm going to take my rear platform. We just need to reduce the Y scale. So hold down the Command key and just reduce that till we're just on the edge of the platform there. Okay, now I want to do the drop from this platform edge downwards. So Command C, Command V, again pipe the blin into the new instance and pipe that into the 3D merge. And F2 to rename it and we'll call it drop. Now I just need to move it out so it's on the edge of the platform. And I can use this Y scale value, Command C, come over to the drop here, come over to its transform. I need to move it out on Z. So paste that into there. And then we can adjust the X rotation down to 180. So that drops down like that. And everything is all joining up. So we've used that value just to get us in the right place. Okay, again, we want to adjust the Y scale just so we're getting the drop and nothing else. So I'm going to adjust it like so. And then obviously we need to carry on. Command C, Command V, pipe the blin into this, pipe this into the 3D merge. F2 to rename it, I'm going to call this Rails. Again, we want to grab the Y scale value here. Command C, oh, that's the Y scale of the drop. Come to the Rails here. And we need to subtract that from the Y offset. So 0.5 minus and then just paste that value in. And you'll see that's put it down there. And again, that's joining up perfectly. And we just need to reset the X rotation to 90. So now we want to increase the Y scale so we get the rails being mapped onto this new plane. So increase that. And we just want to go far enough. We don't want to start getting too much of that near platform there. So. This is not entirely ideal, this shot, because obviously the, the rails and the platform start to curve away from us. So we're not getting the perfect mapping that we'd like. But apart from that, we're doing pretty well. And we have now, if I turn off the 3D grid just to get a better feel for how this is looking, you can see we've got some pretty good mapping, really, of this rear wall, the platform, this drop and the rails. So for my sky, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to take this rear wall, Command C, Command V. I'm going to pipe the blin into it, uh, but I'm not going to add it to this 3D merge here. Instead, I'm going to take this UV map, Command C, Command V, 
pipe this into it. Let's just rename that sky. I need to pipe the projection camera into that new UV map tool. After it, I'm going to apply a 3D transform. So shift space bar 3XF. And after that, I'm going to apply the 3D merge. So shift space bar 3MG. Move that 3D merge up to here and pipe that other UV map into it. I'm going to come to my sky here, come to its transform, grab this Y scale value, command C, come to the Y offset, plus and paste. And that's put my new shape exactly at the top of my previous one. So that's been correctly mapped, but now I can use my 3D transform to push it back on Z and scale it up. So first of all, let me scale it up to 10, and let's push it back on Z by minus five. And then let's just bring it down on Y to somewhere like that. And you'll see we've now got some nice parallax with our sky. How exactly we end up using this is going to depend on where we want to put our camera in the final shot. So we can move this on X if we want, or we can do all manner of things using this 3D transform. But the mapping stays the same because of the way we've set this up. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the front platform. So I'm going to grab the rear platform, Command C, and make myself a little bit of space down here and paste that. And let's call that front platform. And again, I'm going to pipe the blin into it. Again, I'm going to grab a copy of the UV map tool, Command C, Command V, and pipe the new shape into it. Try and find our camera. Let's bring that down. Let's bring it down to here. And take the camera output and pipe it into the UV map tool. Again, let's add a 3D transform on the back of that. So shift space bar 3XF. And we can pipe this 3D transform into this new merge here. Let me just turn back on the grid. So 3D options, 3D options grid. This platform here needs to move across and be mapped with the information from this side of the image. So I'm going to come to its transform here and we need to move it across on Z. So I'm going to move it across holding down the command key till we're just about there. I might just try increasing the Y scale you haven't really got enough pixels to do very much with this. Let's just go with that. And now you'll see we've got the platform mapped there in the foreground. But we've got a bit of a gap between that and the rails. So what I can do is I can use this 3D transform just to push that back to around there. So it's holding the scene together a little bit more. So finally, let's have a look at mapping the cabin. If you remember, it was looking like that. So I'm going to bring this up to the top here to give ourselves a bit more space to work with. Again, let's grab that blin, command C, command V. Let's grab the UV map, command C, command V. Let's join the image to the blin. After the blin, we want to add a 3D shape, so shift space bar 3SH, and pipe that into the UV map. And then also take our camera, projection camera that is, and pipe that into the camera input. So I'm just going to rename this camera F2, call it projection cam. So this shape here, we want to set to a cube. So looking at the output of the UV map there, we can pipe that into our final merge. We're not going to be looking at it just yet. And come back to our 3D shape, come to its uh, transform. And again, let's Reset the pivot point. I want to set the Y pivot to minus 0.5, the X pivot to 0.5, and the Z pivot to 0.5. We also want to just push it up on Y, so 0.5, and it's sitting on our ground plane with its pivot point down there at the bottom left-hand corner. And now what we need to do is we need to adjust the X offset until our cabin comes into shot. So I'm just going to push up the Y offset to where at the base of the cabin there. And then I'm going to scale the whole thing down. Just being a little rough and ready with this. Unlock the X, Y, Z, reduce the Y scale like that. We can also reduce the Z like this. 
And now we can look how that's working with the rest of our scene. So there's our cabin. And I want to add a 3D transform so we can slot it into position. Let's make a bit of space. After that UV map, I'm going to apply a 3D transform. So shift space bar 3XF. And we can use this to position it. But first of all, we need to reset the pivot point, which is all the way over to the left there. Just move it to the center of the cabin. So now we can use our 3D transform to move it into position. And you can see this extra 3D element really helps to give a sense of depth to the scene. So just to finish off, let's add a scene camera. So first of all, let's add a 3D render node. So shift space bar 3RN. Let's take our projection camera, command C, command V. Let's rename it scene cam. Let's pipe it into our final 3D merge node. Let's come to our renderer. Let's make sure it's taking this scene cam as the input and let's have a look at that. And let's zoom out. And there you can see that our scene cam is now looking at the scene and rendering the output. What I do want to do is I want to add some lights. So I'll click on the flow area 3PL for a point light. Let's pipe that into our merge here. Uh, we need to make sure that our renderer has got lighting enabled. We'll just need to reposition this light. And let's make some copies of it. So shift space bar, duplicate. What we'll do is we'll just offset it on X like that. Maybe have three copies, I don't know, something like that. Let's come back to our point light. Controls set that to fall off to linear. And you can see that there's lots we can do just to play around with that lighting. Obviously, when we set the scene up, we'd probably want to exclude the sky from the lighting setup and composite it a different way, but I won't go into that here. You can set up your own camera move using this scene cam to get whatever effect you want. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you again another time.